G'day, Hawks fans. Uh, welcome to Talking Hawks tonight. G'day, Chris. Hey, how you going? Very well, mate. Uh, Talking Hawks. We connect Hawks fans around the world, share our passion and love for the Hawks with some intelligent footy chats and uh, and some laughs along the way. So uh, just us two tonight and uh, thought we'd have a good look at uh, the season to date and a bit of a look forward. Obviously, we've got Sydney coming up this week, but uh, it's been a an interesting season, ups and downs, different pros and cons. You could probably look at Chris. What's um, what's uh, some top of mind for you on uh, on the season that's just been today? Oh, yes, uh, look, we we got a couple of uh, nice comeback wins, come from behind victories. So that was pleasing signs early on. But um, since then, yeah, have not been so uh, successful. But um, yeah, just just a bunch of kids showing some signs, and um, yeah. I guess the downside have been the injuries and not being able to get some of our uh, best players on the park. But, um, yeah, it's given opportunity to other players and we've had to fill some holes and, yeah, we'll, we'll be better for it. Sure. I think the debuts is a, is a big one. The Hawks fans needed to uh, probably hang their hat on a little bit. Um, sad, you know, some injuries that we've had to endure. But, look, at the same time as putting games into other players and getting some experience up, you, you take the good with the bad and the next soldier's in. So we've got, um, you know, the likes of uh, Day potentially on the cusp of returning. Um, that was a shock blow at the start of the season and probably the buoyancy for mine. Uh, a little bit of wind got taken out of the sail at that point uh, of the season and we didn't necessarily continue to... Uh, back it up with, with performances on the field consistently. And that, that's probably, for me, the consistency is the thing that we're we're searching for. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that, I think that's what we want to aim towards uh, in the second half of the season is just getting that consistency. Look, we're, good, we're expecting to lose games, so that's just part and parcel of where we're at. Um, but that consistency and, yeah, no blowout. So I think we're just going to try and keep the those... Um, lapses to a minimum and just try to, you yeah, know, turn it around. As soon as the game gets out of control, we need to just quickly uh, make the correct changes to um, get back on track. Yeah, and in game plan and, and being able to be disciplined and know each other and all of that's part of it. But, look, let's throw it to the fans, Chris. Let's just see. Uh, highs and lows of the season to date, fans. What are your thoughts? Um, let's discuss a few of your uh, talking points. And um, for mine, look, there's a few games where we just got run over and that was... That was disappointing, um, personally, because you're, you're cheering on and, and just enduring and, and getting behind them, getting to the games, uh, watching from home where we had to, and just sort of keeping the. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably an optimistic realist, uh, if I had to coin a phrase, and, and trying to keep that perspective. Um, it, it's interesting because some fans really wanted to put the boots in and were a bit gutted and. I think we can really stick fat in, in, in the realist part of me. Um, we've we've seen the Hawks come through in flying colours and there's been players in and out, coaches in and out, uh, personnel, uh, you know, administration, uh, board members in and out. And, and the, as a club, we're resilient. So um, I think the COVID hangover too of last year and the fixture is probably a factor. Um and it makes it interesting when we look at the second half of this season. And I've sort of penned what I think we'll get as far as wins and losses from here on. And, and there's an implication there with the draft and trade period as well. And things have been thrown up like yeah, Tom Mitchell and, uh, you know, are there some bigger names that might um, be looking over the fence, whether they're looking or not, or, or you know, there's an openness, let's put it that way. Um, media We've, done that right year, today. We've done that every year. We've it's moved on to senior players and it's just the same thing's going to happen this year. It's just slightly different circumstances. Yep. And and we run a good organisation. There is a, a, a degree of level-headedness in the way. The moves we make and even taking a while to perhaps go the youth route was the clubs you know, backing in the football department, Clarko, um, and see that we could make it. But look, what's, uh, what's jumped out at you, Chris, from the fans, just looking at the first half of the year? Yeah, back to... Um, our man Peter Guy, um, got to get the youth in. Um, obviously, Will Day's been injured. We've got Denver sitting on the sidelines waiting to make his debut. Um, we've just got uh, John Newcomb on board and um, Jackson Callow. So a few of those guys, even going back to Connor Downey, stuff like that. So 
yeah, we just want to see what we can do with those kids and um, moving forward because we're going to have a new bunch of kids in the system as soon as we go to the draft. So we can't be stuck in too deep with the kids. We need to know where they're at. Yeah. And for mine, if it, uh, great point, Peter. It's, it's perhaps the obvious one, but how many games do you get in? And for mine, someone like I touched on it last week, I think, um, getting Callow in, exciting, welcome aboard, Jackson. Um, but Jacka as well, probably for mine, looks like they'll be really competing hard. You want to get games into both of them. And then you've got young Cozzy and I think Lewis is, you know, the, there's some old, Captain Obvious is there. But um, uh, who we've got in? Um, Bramble. Um, yep. Peter's also on Downey. You know, for mine, you want games into Downey and Bramble. So, um, yeah, it, it, interesting dilemmas that we've got. But Well, Bramble, Bramble runs on the board. So I think Bramble's a lot closer to um and and yeah didn't really get his chance after he did his hammy so early on yeah yeah this for mine yeah well done Rog uh absolutely CJ Scrimshaw and hopefully we'll touch on the uh, some contract renewals shortly hopefully CJ's just around the corner or oh, contract extensions mind you um you want to go there now quickly let's do okay. it. So, young Ned Reeves, there's another highlight of the year that we haven't uh, talked about on this show, but, yeah, uh, Ned signed on till the end of 2023, is it, I think? Another couple yep. of years. So, that's good signs for uh, for him and for us. And um, and then today, uh, Blake Hardwick, absolute gun, cannot afford to lose him. So, yeah, lucky to re-sign him until the end of 2024. So, yep, that's real, real good for the club. Absolutely. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see one or two more um, yeah, before the end of the year. There are a couple of others coming out of contract, I believe. So uh, the club generally is, I think, responsible with looking at the age of the playing list to try to keep that balance of leadership in, experience to help accelerate the, um, you know, keep us competitive, but accelerate the learning and the um, maturing of the other players coming through. We're probably lacking a little bit in those sort of mid, mid-20s that are, you know, emerging superstars um but we've got some good caliber people in there and you can't go too light on and just go all hardcore put games think, into the um, sorting out those uh contract extensions will help us um you know cement who's hanging around and also gives us our salary cap to work with going into the next season and and what we might be able to spend if we go shopping yeah, and I think um, we end up generally you know, looking at being conservative. I don't think we've got long, long-term commitments with any players right now, um, you know, as in like a seven-year deal or anything like that. The club generally takes a pretty responsible position there, and I think that positions us well with flexibility and um, being able to look at trading options and things like that as well. We don't take on a, a heavy contract that we would might find hard to offload, for example, which we've managed to do a few times. And we've got a little go. common common theme here with um Callow at full back so it, it did get thrown around a little bit it'd be interesting to see which way the hawks go with that one because we like we said we are top heavy down the front end so there'll be either someone uh missing out every week because there's too many tall forwards or yeah we shift one of them back whether it be Callow or what we said cozy maybe and maybe that is the way you get games into jacker and Callow because if he's of the brian lake mold um happy days um we just need a, a, a Hodgie bark and orders at uh, at a lakey to sometimes get them to focus. So all good. Um, here we go. Uh, I think the hardness is is one thing that one of the fans touched on here. Um, I think we'd like to see a bit more of that from the first half of the season. If we're just being honest, um, a bit of confusion maybe in, in who goes to get ball, you know, tinkering with that um, the players in and out and their roles. Uh, in and out by in and out, who goes in to get the ball, who's on the outside, but also then injury and trying to manage through that. So getting consistency of, I guess, the right chemistry in there, I think that's something we've struggled with a bit. Um, yep. That said, you know, we're trying to be competitive and put games into kids, so we're not getting pants by, you know, 100 points and things like that, and we are blooding youth. So for mine, you know, it's happening. Um I think for mine, Chris, the I'm uh, really interested. Box Hill, that mm -hmm. is a positive for me. I mean, the first half of the season, we've got some good youth coming through. I think the game plan looks a little bit different um, sometimes when Sammy's at the helm and what they're doing 
maybe there's a little bit more um, simplicity and, and um, maybe it's the opposition they've played, combination of things potentially, but it's nice that the kids can come in, well, you know, young players can come in from, with confidence and, and already, you know, Newcomb, uh, Bramble, it, it's nice kids coming out of that sort of VFL system getting a look into the the senior side this year. And I think that's where you can have a little bit of hope, Hawks fans. Yeah, definitely. Um, it just gives that winning mentality and just um, that confidence within the group. So, yeah, that's what we need. We need them to come up with without that losing mentality where you don't want to lose every week. So, yeah, to have some wins down at Box Hill is really good. And just that the fact that Sam Mitchell's on the right track, um, do we we go there now? Why not? Um, oh, well, hold this... off, hold off, hold off. Oh, Let, let's go right. there. Let, let's wind right up. You know, there's there's been a little Buckley announcement today, Hawks fans. So you know, the media's going to run riot. You know, who was it? Tom? Uh, who, who was the journo trying to get his own name in lights with the Tom Mitchell exclusive? I mean, give it a break. Morris, um, Morris, yeah, I think it was. Um, look, that's that's the game there, isn't it? So it's. But he I must think, have heard something a little bit more rock solid to to go with the story. Like we've been talking about it for a while. Everyone talks about it, but to actually drop it in the media, he must have heard something. Regardless, you know, here we're not trying to fan the the rumor and innuendo. We'll let them chase all that stuff. We'll, we'll try and keep it factual. You know, we'll entertain it. We'll raise it. Um, we'll have a look, but we won't. It's only it's only speculation, it. and and we can speculate, but it's only going to happen for the next. 10, 12, 15 weeks until it actually unfolds. Yep. Look, there's going to be um, interesting things, no doubt, uh, in the press. But look, here we go, just on that theme still. Box Hill, doing nicely. Um, got some good wins up. And I think, um, yeah, be interesting to see if we get more of that. Can that cut it? at the AFL level, or we're trying to do something different in terms of the game plan, the way we move the ball, um, touched on there that it's perhaps a bit more direct. Maybe the, the, the competition, the level movement. up. The quicker ball movement, I think. The quicker ball movement's a, a major factor there. And and I see our guys do it and they hesitate to take the quick, the first option, the quick kick or, or the kick into the guts, which is a risky one. You turn it over, you get scored against, but that's what breaks open the game and you get score from it, so... Yep. Oh, well, we you, need bring a, you bring a Duke Newcomb in and you never know. Um, he was doing a bit of it down there. Let's see. Um, yep. We'd love to see him get a look in early. Um, so, look, the the return uh, of some of these long-standing injuries, um, that's going to give us you know, Sicily out, Gunston out for majority of the first half. They, they're all significant um, pieces for us and, and I think... The leadership as well uh, goes without saying. Dave and just uh, just a mature head on his shoulders. We've got that to look forward to, and the fact that they've even been around the club, around the players, mentoring, you know, coaching at back box hill level with Sammy and things like that. Um, we're just on the on the field. There's some exciting signs there to come as well. Who are you most excited to see come in, Chris, from those those three? Those three, I was going to say our boy. Uh... Denver, um, probably. Oh, did you who you want? Lockie Bramble, did you say? Uh, three injuries: no, Sicily, Gunston. Oh, sorry, and those three. Day. Oh, sorry. Um, I oh, probably will day. We all we all love Sicily and know what he can do, and and he sort of declared he's not coming back this season, so probably will day for mine. Yep. Fair enough. Let's change gears a little. So um, we have had. Um, a sponsor, uh, base compression. Yeah, we had a good, uh, good feedback from one of the fans that took us up on the uh, Talking Hawks offer with uh, with base. So base compression do adult, women's, youth, um, streetwear, <laughs> and they uh, they've offered uh, Talking Hawks fans. We'll pop it in the uh, the show link afterwards, but twenty percent off. Um, if you get some of the gear, uh, they, they are involved with a number of professional um, teams across uh, basketball, um, soccer, and um, 
and also the the Victorian Amateur Football League. So um, good gear, um, good feedback from the fan that uh, got their their uh, skins as a result. So check them out. Base Compression, uh, know that a little bit comes back to Talking Hawks to help us keep going. So um, thank you, Base Compression. Um, Spruik, over. But we've also, um, I think, got an interesting position. The run home, Chris. Um, now, let, let's do Bucks now. Come on. You were starting Buckley, to wind up. Yep. Yeah, I, I was a bit... Um... I know, I know. You could sort of see it coming potentially at some stage, but um, yeah, I, I actually watched uh, the press conference and it was a different um, exit than I was expecting. So um, I, th- I think it was a good move because you didn't want to see him go out in a bad way, and you know he's he's been a legend at Collingwood for so many years without uh, reaching the ultimate success. But yeah, it it, it leaves uh, another potential coach on the market and also another hole for another coach to move into. So, yeah, we'll see lots of speculation. I think Robert Harvey was the man named to um, fill the spot temporarily, but I can't see him being a a senior coach. So maybe that's why he's been around. He has, and and he's gone for a few senior gigs and missed out. So I don't know if he's got what it takes. There was the likes of... There was, a, there was a big uh, list of names. Rossi Lyon, Michael Voss. I liked Vossi. I think. Yeah, Vossi's yeah. come back and done his um, uh, six or seven it? years now in the uh, broadening his skills. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'd, I'd like to see him get another crack at a senior spot. I guess uh, happened with Brett Ratton, I guess. Failed. Went back to assistant, got coach again. So. Yep. Uze, Scott Burns. Yeah, Daniel, our boys. Gene Syracuse. So I was also it. thinking Johnny Barker was uh, an old Hawthorne legend. Um, recently walked from the Blues. So I, I think he was looking to move away from coaching, but you know, you'd ask the question, I think. Um, he was he the uh, caretaker with the Blues as well. But obviously the media's going to go nuts trying to put all their angles on and the pressure on with Clarko and Sam Mitchell and Mitchell you know, until the end of this year with... Box Hill, yet to be decided. Uh, Clarko to the end of next year. Um, but from even before the season, Clarko and the club being consistent message. We're going to have a chat towards the end of this year. Um, we'll have a good look at it. Kenneth's come out today and said nothing changes. Um, yeah. Put the fire it. Front foot. Yeah. Front foot. Um, and, and whether Sammy feels up to it, uh, a, a senior coaching gig. My gut feel is it's going to be uh, a not yet, regardless of who might approach him. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, they'd have to be super keen to um, take him ahead of uh, some of the candidates out there, I think. But stranger things have happened, and all the best to um, to Mitch when he makes that decision. But, yeah, I, I think it's in his best interest to um, just stay at the lower levels for now and before he takes that head roll. There's so much to it, isn't there? Look, uh, Choco Williams, we missed. Thank you, Nick. Um, here we go. He, he, he thinks that's uh, that's the gig. Um, our mate, uh, Gary Ayres. Could you mm-hmm. get a better bloke, more experience? And I don't know if you've seen the Talking Hawk show with him on it, but, geez, he, he was just, for me, as a footy fan, just take the Hawthorne hat off for a moment, what came out of that guy's mouth, um, we just... You'd hang on that if you're a young footballer. Um, and if you've got a team that you've got to rebuild, you've got uh, someone with a plethora of experiences on the field and off the field. Um, well, crazy we're, not seeing, um, like we're seeing Chris Fagan go do it up at Brisbane. So it's age isn't a factor there. It's that experience and uh, knowledge. So, yeah, same with Choco Williams. He's more than capable. But, we, but whether he wants that role or not, who knows? But he would be yeah. someone you'd be speaking to. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, the suggestion of, you know, Collingwood being a big club, being able to throw whatever they want at Clarko. I don't think it's a money thing for Clarko personally, is my opinion. And um, I think it'll be a, a responsible and, and well weighed up decision when he um, decides his time is done at Hawthorne. And I don't think it's this year. So that's that's for mine. Who knows? There might be another coaching spot or two vacant before the end of the year. We'll see how we go. Oh, well, it can start a merry-go-round, can't it? So, look, anyway, Definitely. 
there's Bucks. There's the coaching. I think our uh, two beloved uh, in Clarko and Mitchell are hanging around. So, um, again, stick fat, get down to Box Hill, encourage Sammy um, and the Box Hill team. So, look, what do you – this is a good question. Benny, being a star – Who's our game changer? Look, I think CJ showed the most promise at the start. We know Will Day's had moments as well. Um, for a couple of youngsters, I see Dimmer consistently um, just doing his work. Um, and it's a no, you know, it's not fancy look at me. It's just the, the gutsy stuff, getting things done. And I think, um, yeah, well, what, what do you think, Chris? Who's our game changer? Fans, let us know. I think we need our game changer not to be in the back line and to be either midfield or forward who can really hit the scoreboard and impact the scoreboard that way. Um, that was probably what we're expecting Wingard to do, and he can on occasions. But, um, yeah, I think Warper was going in that direction before he – I don't know. I think Warper was on the, on the track to uh, – to, uh, Keep improving. So I'm hoping he finishes off this season strong and um, he can be our game changer next year. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's it would be nice. Um, Stay up politely. Disagree with you a little here. And when he dominates, we haven't always had metres gained. And who he feeds, whether they get metres gained, I think that's probably... We saw that a few years ago pre-injury where that was consistently happening. I think he's, I read, com he's coming back very well, though, Tommy, and, and keep going on there. I read something which was a pretty fair assessment, and that was, I guess, in relation to potentially him being traded, that he's an accumulator and he's not super damaging, but at the moment he's got no one to give the ball to who's damaging either. So, yeah, if he was to go to a club like Richmond, who have got people who are good ball users, then that might be a good fit for him. So, anyway, we won't go any further with that because it's just all speculation but yeah uh love it maybe scrimmer absolutely having a cracking season um Freud and and 100%. yeah well pedo uh, look i think it's it's coming it's coming he's a young man so again um there's oh, okay kerry here we go brewsty's a little bit of shine's gone off this year but supply in and all of that and the crumbing, the crumbing that I've loved that he's done, he does in his sleep. Um, I think he goes to bed with a piece of toast every night. He's get that many crumbs when he's in his sleep. That's, um, but yeah, that's still there. You don't lose that. So he's, he's there. Um, and these young kids around him will be good um, just to glean from that as well. But I think Jago for mine as well has been a standout this year. He can. Yep. True. And True. has no. influenced games this year. So, how um, quickly do you forget? He he had a killer start to the season, and yeah, a little bit of a concussion and whatnot, and then yes, quickly forget. But yeah, we're looking to get him back into the side this uh, this week, so that'll be good. Himself and Will Day, and potentially room for another one or two. But we'll have to wait till tomorrow night at uh, six twenty to to find out the news on who they name this week. I know. I'll, I'll throw in Cozzy. I think Cozzy's still there to just to get some nice bags for us. Um, I think he's probably then for mine one of the next big forwards. I could see him probably doing that slightly ahead of uh, Lewis, who uh, yeah I, I'm I'm fond of. But uh, anyway, the second half of the season, I guess we want to look at that before we do. Um, let's have a bit of a look at the run home. Um, so we've got Sydney. Um, what do we want to see? Because where we are now, disappointing on the ladder with results. I don't want a spoon. Um, that doesn't really doesn't my really go in the same sentence as the word Hawthorne. My first thoughts here was, oh yeah, Sydney up in Sydney, yeah, probably get the win. But geez, I only just snuck over the line against the Saints, and the Saints have almost got a li very limited list to choose from. They're, they've got about three or four spare players that aren't injured. So the Saints mm. nearly knocked them off and don't have a lot to choose from. And we're getting back to close to, oh, not full strength. I know you're missing Sicily, but 
yeah, I don't know. I think we could. This is this is a game where we could just sneak a win. Okay, no, I'm right. not gonna well, not gonna say that's don't pencil in a loss. All right. Well, well let's go into this game a little. So I think um, for mine, if, if we saw from the club today, uh, if Day's available, Omira, yeah, likely ends. Uh, they they were asking whether the uh, um, new draft days, Newcomb and Callow are a chance. For mine, Newcomb, yes. Um, Callow, no. Um, keen to see him, but I don't think they'll just brush him straight in. Um, yeah. The DGB available, um, Denver, Granger Barris, would be a maybe, I, I think, in the club's minds. Um, fitness after just coming straight up injury may go into Box Hill again uh, just to get uh, a few more kilometres into legs. But um, I, I think he'll be knocking on the door pretty soon and they'll be keen to put games into Denver, who Talking Hawks are very proud to be um, a player sponsor this year of. So um, that's a way, Peter. So for those of you fans that have been part of that um, journey, contributed out of your own pockets, thank you. Um, more news on that to come to you that have contributed soon. So um, do you think New- Newcomb's an in? It's got to be real close. Um, but Bans? Bram Bramble's there. He's got the runs on the board just as much uh, at Box okay. Hill prior to his injury. So it's, it's a close race. But I'd like to see one of them in. Might hold him out, you think. Um, either boy, yeah, you know, just get him in there. One of them, that'd be amazing. Um, my my oh. issue is we've got a bunch of smaller forwards. We've seen uh, Morris came in for us, didn't he? Um, I'm loving what I'm seeing from uh, Saunders. He's looking yes. really good. Um, who have we got? Brockman sitting there waiting to come back in. He's had a bit of illness and um, injury. So there's lots of um, players of that mould who are just sitting on the... Uh, on the bench waiting to, to get a game. So it's yep. it's good, but we've at the end of the yeah, we've got to pick one or two and um I guess probably stick with them and in, instead of moving them in out of the team every week. Okay. Uh so some fans talking up uh Titch Mitchell, Tom Mitchell, uh potentially to dominate in Sydney, brings his best. Uh that'd be great. Look, with all the press as well, it'd be interesting to see how he responds. Does he just put the blinkers on, get the job done, uh, or, or go and do his role, importantly? Um, the buddy factor. I'm, yeah, great experience for, uh, is it? Is it Frost? Is it Scrimshaw? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think we've got anyone to um, ideally match up on Buddy. He's going to expose someone somehow. But he was he was going deep in the last game. I saw him right in the back. I just had to double take and say if they changed ends or something. I just was shocked. Um, he was getting it about twenty five out from uh, from full back for this one. So you know he's getting on his bike. It's good. He's he's up and fit. But um, oh look, he's, he's averaging about fifteen touches and about three goals a game still. So and he's actually put a few games together for once. So yep. Yeah. Let's just hope he's um, due for a bad one. All right. Well, look, um, yeah, for mine up in Sydney, it's uh, it's gettable. I probably think we're hard-pressed to, to get a win this week, though. Um, let us know what you think, fans. Uh, who's getting out? What's the margin? We'll come back to it towards the end. Um, but as I look ahead, so Sydney, for mine, doubtful. I don't, don't think we'll quite get that one. Um, Essendon, yeah, we'll around 14. Essendon, oh, look, I, th- I think Essendon's probably more dangerous than Sydney, to be honest, even though we did um, sneak a win against them earlier in the season. So yep. I'd pencil that in for a, a loss at this stage. I'll just run through a few. Um, so for mine, um, these are questionable. Essendon, GWS and Fremantle. Yes, no, or maybe. 14, 15 and 17. So you've got a yes against who? I'm just saying yes, no, or maybe. So GWS. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, gotcha. Um, and and crows and pies. Crows could could hurt us. Uh, I, I, I'm going to pencil in some wins against the pies and and the crows. Uh, you, you'd, I'd tell you what, you'd pick up. I'm glad we're not playing pies this week with Buckley's last game, or the following week with their new coach because they're yeah, just dangerous. Yeah. 
it, uh, the players really live, don't they, generally? So I would say yeah. we've probably got three to four wins. I think Clarko always does well just to get uh, us finishing well at the end of a season too, regardless of the draw. I think our last game is against the Tigers as well. but um, It is. Be nice to knock yeah. them off twice. Yeah. So if at the end of the year we're, we're finishing with, you know, six wins or something like that, I think that keeps us away from the wooden spoon. Um, let's just uh, certainly steer clear of that one, but keep us high up in the uh, the draft and then we'll see. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, GWS possibly. They haven't been in the greatest form, but they're getting some players back into their team. Port, probably not. Frio, I think that's down in Tassie. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll like Freo, but I think they'd beat us. Melbourne, Brisbane, probably losses. Adelaide again, maybe. Jeez, it was a good game against them, so hopefully it's another close one. Like you said, Collingwood, chance to knock them off. Bulldogs, Richmond to finish, probably not. So, yeah, maybe two or three tops there, I'd say. All right. So, yeah, I think that two is a risk. I haven't looked at the north draw to see whether that keeps off the uh, wooden spoon race, but um, okay. So for this round then, Chris, uh, against Sydney, um, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to lose by 15, sadly. Um, but I think, and, and I'll talk to the optics and the metrics, the things that we might look at as far as improvement in the latter half in a moment. So, um, but latter half of the season, that is your tip, Chris? Oh, look, if I'm going to go with my head, it would be um, Sydney. So I'll just throw a 22-point margin there. That'll do. Okay. There you go. Um, a few suggestions. Uh, maybe play, who was it? Cozzy on Buddy. I don't mind that. Got the engine. Thank you, well, It would be a good uh, learning curve for him too on uh, leading patterns and um, just muscling with his body and whatnot. So that would be a good, uh, good little learning experience for him. Maybe a chop out. Um, come on, Fred. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is harsh. You, you've kept That's it true. clean. I like come it. Come on. <laughs> um, this is an interesting insight. Reva, does it does it get enough? Does he get enough room? Um, where, where do you think he's coming from there, Chris? Ah, uh, probably because he hasn't got the biggest uh, engine going around. So at least he'll be able to. Um, you know, run out, run a bit deeper, maybe forward and back, rather than just sort of playing, a, staying a kick behind play. But yeah, potentially with his um, good ball use out of the ruck, uh, potentially feed a lot of goals. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So um, it'd be nice just to see him giving him some havoc, resting up forward as well. Just Jeez, he, he went a bit light on with the uh, beating an egg, but he's come out and launched a, a seven goal, uh, <laughs> seven goals for buddies. Fred, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> <to it? laughs> um, so, look, one thing, um, metrics. Just I think you start to look at contested ball. You start to look at meters gain. You start to look at the moving patterns out of defence. Like your um your, your disposal efficiency, so you're trying to perhaps play with who you put the ball, uh, who's which plays you put the the ball into their hands to to kick on the left side, on the right side, at these positions on the ground, um, it, those uh, how how many men behind the ball and things like that. You got an opportunity to start to tinker with some when you see some natural abilities. Again, back to Denver, he, he talked about now understanding how to fit within a system. Um, the Hawthorne system, whereas when he was uh, in the Waffle last year, you know, playing to his strengths. But I think the, the coaching staff will be licking their chops at Van Aert and say, great, we've got this talent, we've got these youths coming through now. How do we play to their strengths within this system? Which ones are you giving, you know, the rights to, you know, a CJ, just just run, fella, you know, through these areas. I don't know those instructions, but I'm interested in, you know, the bounce, it's an interesting metric. How, how many bounces do we get? Is that what we're looking to do? Where does the ball go through the corridor against which teams? I'd, I'd, I'd like to see more of um, with the the man on the mark having to be, you know, restricted with the and the overlap running handball. 
I don't th- like it was a big thing early on, and a few teams are still doing it, and it's really effective. I'd like to see us really push for that running handball to the next player. I tell you, the big one for mine compared to the first half of the season, and, and um, I think those tap outs to advantage now that Reeves is in and get him connecting with his, his old mate cousins. Um, let's just see what, as a metrics, I would love at the end of the year to see first half of the year hit outs to advantage compared to the second half if Reeves continues to get gains. Um, there's those sorts of things I think we really need to look forward to. And how many quarters do you win? Mark um, since 50. What Mark. restricted? Yeah, big one. Big one. Um, you know, limiting team scoring. You know, there can be different focuses in different weeks. And sometimes getting a read on all of this, it, the whole time, you know, it, it can be hard for Hawks fans, but you don't know if there's weeks at a time where a different line coach is getting, you know, some more liberty to try some different things. And so we're trying to still make sense of it as fans sometimes. But I think there's a lot of planning that goes into this and just preparing, you know, maybe even someone grooming them at Box Hill level, run with tag, tagging roles, make it two-way. Greaves, um, Finn McGuinness, they've been called out by Sam Mitchell as needing to perhaps improve that defensive side of their game as well as they're attacking. If they're doing that, and then where do you slot them in? You know, there's these sorts of pieces to the puzzle as well that I think in the second half of the year we really want to have a good look at. So, um, I think that's where John Newcomb's um, also got good raps, that he, he does go both ways. He's defensive and attacking, so looking forward to seeing him. Yep, yep. Um, Fred's got the solutions. Oh, just let's go back to... Um, there's some simplicity. Nice... Yeah. No, no, no. Well, there's the freedom with young players. You think about the adjustment. There's a bit of sense to this. Uh, shoot me down, but um, there's a few others agreeing with Fred. So um, I think not having an overcomplicated game plan when you're getting a new system down pat and, and games into players... How do you get games into players and expect a sophisticated game plan? I, I don't tell me. Oh, it's it's a quick learning curve. It's not like a basketball court where you have got a small set plays. But yeah, I mean, there's got to be some sort of um, basic sort of direction and and how we go about it. But yeah, that's cool. If if they want to run with it that way, that's we can. Like you said, it's about experimenting a little bit. Um, you can't do too much at once, but. Brand new rule. <laughs> Oops, no, sorry, go no. on. There we are. Oh, all over the shop. Go, you there get it. Go. I've got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Yep. Bring in a new rule. Cannot kick the ball backwards. Um, yeah, it does slow the play down. It lets the opposition set their defences. So, yeah, that'd be great. Just pretty simple and just, yeah, let's take the game on. Be aggressive. Yep. Well, we're very uh, stoked to have people of all ages from different parts of the world tuning in that love the Hawks. And, and it's interesting, even just different eras of fans. Like, I don't know, you know, Tom's age, but there can be ones that just, yep, just go and get it, be aggressive. Um, it's The game definitely evolves, but I think it can always be reinvented. It's sort of a little bit like fashion, you know. Things can come back in. So um, who knows? Has Clark who got some some genius? He's reinvented uh, you know, defense, um, turned it into offense. You know, he's influenced the game in ways that many coaches have never been able to. So let's uh, see what the maestro can do there. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Inject speed. We need speed. It's not much you can do about speed if you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> is it getting to uh, the the ball to the players that can hit it with speed as well though you know things like that where do they need to be positioned are we getting the ball just disposal efficiency can wreck that the structure can be there uh you can have chad sitting there uh who else might we bring day mp um cj it depends some can be trying to run it from back the back half into the attacking half um Others, I think, like Chad, that you want to sort of play them in that attacking half and then set up in that forward 50. So there we go. Saunders. Yes. Yes, he is fast. Uh, watched him at Box Hill a few times this season. So, yeah, looking forward to um, him getting a game. He's got a uh, bit of defensive uh, 
niche to him. Uh, what have we got? Yeah, yep. You need a bit of flow. I think we need, uh, we need the – well, that, that comes down to people leading too to the right spots and – and just having that open negative space to kick into as well. So sometimes that can get a bit clogged up, and it's not necessarily us. Sometimes the other teams have got really good defensive structures, but and it forces someone to take a really tight kick or take an easy option and push it wide. So, yeah, mm. I think we just need to take the game on a bit more. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, on the whole, there is a lot of things to watch to get to the games for. Um I think we'll keep the right messages are consistently coming out of the club. I know there's been different groups that have, uh, um, Hawks Insiders, uh, like the content those boys are putting out. Um, they've done a player by player rundown. There's other views, you know, from, from different fans on what they're looking at and what they're wanting out of the club. I, I think sit tight, Hawks fans. We've got a well governed club. Um, to, to, I, would love if we can get Justin Reeves on, who did agree to come on some time back. Um, but yeah, he, hearing firsthand from the club, um, just what's going on. There's a lot happening, you know. Still ba- balancing that uh, that soft cap and things like that. So um, there might be a few, I think, staff in the AFL system that are moving and have taken stock of Crossgrove. And if we're in for a fixture that keeps moving and people are away from their family again, it's probably going to be challenging and the, uh, I guess, the pool of, of experienced heads uh, that can come in and continue, continue to contribute or get poached or targeted from our club. It's, uh, it's, it's things we need to just be mindful of as well. So I think you know, the club is well run in that regard and we keep building good people. So, um, mate, I, I think we'll finish off with... Um, just one little pump up on the uh, on the YouTube channel. So we've got what is it three three thirty nine subscribers. We've got our interview with Campbell Brown that we'd love to uh, drop when we hit four hundred uh, subscriptions on YouTube. And if we can hit five hundred by the end of June, uh, Jordan Lewis, that interview will be available uh, to you on on YouTube. So if you get across the link tree link tr ee slash talking hawks. You'll um, see the details to subscribe to us on YouTube if you're not already. Thank you. We know 50% of you uh, that watch are not currently subscribed. Um, but also that's where you can get your 20% off the base compression gear as well. With a little bit will come in to help us do what we do. So um, enjoy the, the base compression gear. And Chris, any parting thoughts for tonight? Fans, last rounds. No, just just like we said, uh, touched on earlier, we just want to see that consistency and effort. So that's all we ask. We want to see a couple of young kids come in over the next few weeks, especially it'd be nice to see one this week. But, um, yep. yeah, looking forward to a Friday night game, not a Sunday late afternoon game. It's good. Yep. Ah, excellent. Um, yeah, for mine, keen to see some of these uh, fans, uh, sorry, players that have been injured getting a look in, keen to see as much as we can at least three to four games into some of these kids that are really on the cusp or, or have only got a couple and just give them some consistent opportunity to to get in there. So uh, everyone, enjoy the game this week. Uh, have a good one and uh, go Hawks. Let's get up against the Swannies. Thanks for joining us, guys. Go Hawks. Cheers, guys.